Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning, afternoon or evening depending on the time that you are watching this this is statics uh, class session for chapter 5 alright so today uh, we will recap a bit on what we have covered um, in the last class and hopefully we have to cover the whole uh, material that we need to cover in this chapter and in the next class hopefully inshallah we will focus more on the you know, um, tutorial on us, uh, answering question. So, um, right now we are in chapter 5. Hopefully you can refer to your slides. Um, if you are watching this in your computer, hopefully you have the slides on one side and the screen on the other side. Uh, hopefully you can also see the screen here, but um, the note that I'm referring to, the slide that I'm referring to is, is basically the slide that have been given to you. Alright, so but if you watch in your handphone, hopefully you can figure it out how to how to make this possible. Alright, but I try to do my best to have uh, whatever needed to be illustrated here as uh, as best as I can. But of course, some of the diagram is more clear if you see on the slide. Alright, so Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Rabbi Zidni wa Mazuki Fama Allahu Mustahlana Fatima Dafan Shalina Min Khazayna Rahma Taifa Rahma Bismillah, chapter 5. Right. Chapter 5 is about what? It is about an equilibrium of a rigid body and also the free body diagram that we need to draw um, to start the calculation. Right. Now, we have covered the 2D part, two dimensional part, and we actually have already started the 3D part. Right. Just to refresh. Now, how is the problem in this chapter different with chapter 3 where we are dealing with equilibrium for particle uh, it is because when you have a dimension the force is the given dimension and length from any other point will create a tendency for rotation which is really due to the chapter 4 about moment that we have calculated before right now and the first step always the first step in uh, solving equilibrium equilibrium problem is to draw the free body diagram so um, the difference in this chapter compared to this uh, chapter 3 where you have equilibrium for particle is that you have the dimension hence you have the moment right now um, we have covered let me just see what we have covered so we have covered also the separation now the important thing about this chapter is when you want to have okay, let's say you have to solve equally Problem, right? So we are solving equilibrium problem. The first step is always the body diagram, right? And in the rigid body, the free body diagram will also include some supports, different type of supports that you need to to be able to draw before you can be able to uh, analyze and calculate in the calculation, right? Um, because after this, we will use um, equation of equilibrium. So, summation force equal to zero, summation moment equal to zero, right? But before that, this is the important part where you have to be able to draw the free body diagram um, for rigid bodies, right? In 2D, we have covered different type of, of, of supports. For example, if a force and still on the floor, then free body diagram meaning that you have to draw only the box as the body without the floor, without the ground. Because if it's still with the ground, it's still not a free body diagram as we have discussed before. And we have to draw the normal reaction, which means this is the force from the ground onto the box. Right? Basically, that's the separate reaction, the simplest one. We have covered different different types, if you can recall. One is um, common one is when you have a thin support, right? So when you have to draw the free body diagram, we have the x and y component. For example, if this is point A, normally we label it A x and A y. What does this mean? This means is that we have a restriction, we have a reaction support, we have a reaction force in this axis and this axis, right? As we mentioned earlier, uh, before. This one is assumption. The, the direction is assumption because you can also assume to the left or here you can also assume 
downwards, right? Um, and we only really know definitely whether it's to the right or to the left, upwards or downwards, after we get the calculation and we get, oh, are this positive or negative, based on our assumption. But what it means is that when we draw this, there's a restriction, horizontally, there's a restriction vertically, as for pin support, right? If we have fixed support, then when you draw, obviously this basically the question that you need to ask yourself as we have discussed before is does this fit support or it's uh, fixed to the ground, does it restrict any movement horizontally? It does, obviously, so you have it on. Does it restrict vertical movement? Yes, it does. Does it restrict rotation? Yes, it does. Right? So you have, for example, the x in this point A again, and then the y and and e. Right? So those are the example of different type of support that can exist in any given um, rigid body problem in two dimensional right we have gone through this one hopefully you have get the understanding of why uh, we have this one right for example we have followed before um, okay something like this we have and then this is a pinch apart okay. so when you draw the free body diagram so, in this one, we have to consider the axis to be like this and perpendicular axis, obviously. So, in this case, the collar will allow the movement here, so there's no restriction. But you cannot move in this direction, right? So, you have this one reaction, and because of the pin here, it cannot get, so there's no restriction in terms of moment, right? So, that's how you should understand and to determine whether what kind of um, support action is there uh, at any particular support, right? So we have covered this one, so this is just to refresh and hence um, then you have to draw the free, full free good diagram and solve everything in uh, using equation, uh, equation of equilibrium, right? Now, next we go to 3D, right? And that's one concept actually that is actually applicable also for 2D and 3D which we have covered which is two force member right hopefully it's still called, kind of called this one two force member what is it? it is by definition a member that have forces acting on it only at two points for example um, let's say we have This member here, we have in here, let's say it is connected to another member here, here, and then uh, let's say uh, this is a member here, and then there's a pin here, right? No. And let's say, okay, let's say, let's make it interesting, let's say we have here force, right? Now, hopefully you can still see this clearly because of the glare. Now, so if you look at this one, basically you can separate this into three different angles, right? This one, and then this one, and then that one over there, right? Now, how to determine, how to identify whether there's two force member or not is basically, by definition, the member only have forces acting on it at two point to this thing point eh? by the way this number here oops where is the point where you have forces one is here and what that that is number one right so by definition that is two force member here is two force member what about this one in this case you can see here one point here another point here another point so this is actually three force member right in this case one point here one point here this is two force member now, what is special about two force members is that because when this whole structure is in equilibrium, each member also has to be in equilibrium, right? That's the concept. Now, if each of these is in equilibrium, then it has to satisfy both equation. Summation of F must be equal to zero and summation of moment must be equal to zero, right? And, okay, this is for three force member, it is just like any other member, any generic member, we will deal with um, as usual. For example, 
Copy here, what is the restriction, what is the support ratio that we have We have um, X and Y component Not because it's pin there Here we have just the force, here another pin For example, X and Y component The direction is assumption of course But it's just as normal um, consideration as usual For pin support, we have X component and Y component Why? Because pin support restricts uh, X movement, Y movement, but it is free to rotate. Right? Now, but for two force member, the only possibility for it to have for summation of force equal to zero and summation of moment equal to zero, refer back to the recording for the previous class if you, um, if you forget, because I just uh, refreshing this one, is for the force to act along that line. Right? So it's either if you assume it's to be tension, it will have force like that, or if you assume to be tension, the compression is the opposite way. But that's the only configuration possible for it to fulfill both at the same time. Because if you have at any other angles, you might cancel the force, but the moment will be there, right? So that's the only possibility. Similarly here, it must be along this line. So if you assume that there is some compression for this line, it will be something. Like that, that while the force cancel each other and there's no moment because the force is clear in the same line, right? So that's the, the 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 special thing about two force member. Hopefully you understand that one. Hopefully you can identify that's number one. But just by the three, okay, this is three force member, this is two force member, okay, two force member. You have to assume the tension of compression. This is another two force member, four force member, right? So we have learned that one. This is applicable for both two D and three D. And the two force member, that's basically the, the, the phenomena. Alright, so that we have covered. Um, so, normally the first step for drawing the free body diagram is to identify two force members. So that when this is two, then it affects how it uh, uh, reacts or, or the force with another member, right? Um, Alright, so. Um, we have covered some example before, correct? Uh, this is so we'll go to 3D, right? So I'm going to work this out. Now, for 3D, the concept is still the same, right? Um, to solve the equilibrium problem, you have to draw the free body diagram and then you solve this uh, equation of the equilibrium. Just that the free body diagram will be 3D free body diagram, right? And hence, you need to understand 3D support, right? So there are several examples that you can see. Now, smooth surface, I think you, you understand already, right? If, for example, I'm leaning to the whiteboard or to the wall, just like this wall. Let's say I'm leaning with my head, right? Right? Like that, right? So if you, I draw, if I to draw the free body diagram, so okay, this is not, this is still two D, not three D, right? But it's still just a normal direction there, right? So. This is just illustration of smooth surface. What else? So if you have bearing, general bearing, okay, this is difficult to draw. All right, ball and socket. Right, we we consider ball and socket first. If you have ball and socket, let's say this is the three axis x, and and you have something like. Uh, it's basically like a ball and there's a socket. Uh, I'm not sure how to draw it. And then you have something like that problem, right? Like, um, see the slide or see in the textbook or the Google ball and socket. Uh, it's basically you will have a ball trapped in a socket, just like what is an example? 
this is quite a classic example perhaps it's like if you have seen the fountain pen pad or something where you have some papers etc and then there's a pen where it is, you're free to rotate like I'm not sure if you have seen that one is it still available or not if you have seen that one you know what I'm talking about so in that case you are free to rotate but that one you cannot move in any given axis right it's still there but you can rotate it right? that's ball and socket I think someone mentioned uh, um, a more relevant example for kids nowadays is if you have the joy joystick or joy pad or something like your Xbox or something where some of the button is like that right it's you can imagine inside there's a ball and uh, the, the stick uh, goes out where you can go in any way rotate in any way but that that ball inside is it's locked in that position right it cannot move in this direction in this direction or this direction but it allows for any rotation, right? So that's ball and socket. So if you understand that, so when you draw the frequency of this thing, right? What will be the support direction? So basically, the question is: Does it allow movement in X? Yes and no. It does not allow. It restricts. So you have the support direction there, for example, in X. If this is point E. And then does it allow movement in Y? No, there's a restriction in in Y. Does it allow for Z movement? No, E Z. Right? Does it allow for rotation about X axis? Yes, you can rotate. Or rotation about Y axis? Yes. Rotation about Z axis? Yes. So there's no restriction there. You do not have any uh, support reaction in the moment. So you have E X, E Y, and E Z. Right, so that's how you determine uh, support reaction. Right. Um, what else? If you have a hinge, right? I'm assuming you know what is a hinge, right? If you don't, just take a look at this one. Let's zoom in. Oop. There. Right. I think you know, right? What I'm talking about. This hinge over here. Right. So how do you determine? What is the support reaction plan, right? So this hinge doesn't allow if I have like X, Y, and Z, right? Does it allow movement in X direction? No, it doesn't. So you draw X, like AX. Does it allow movement in Y? No. Then AY. Does it allow movement upwards? Is it? No, you draw EZ. Right? Does it allow rotation about X axis? Right? So the board cannot rotate this way, right? So you have M E X. Does it allow rotation about Y? No, it does not. So you have M E Y. Does it allow rotation about Z? It actually allows, right? Because you can rotate the law in this manner, right? About Z axis. So you will have E X, E Y, E Z, M E X, and M E Y. Right? So that's how you determine whether um, oops. Uh, or how to draw the uh, support action at any particular support. That's a hinge, right? So in in in, in hinge, for example, um, how to draw? Let's say you have a door. This one, this this is a. Mm, let's let's say you have a hinge there. Right? right? This this is a door on the ground that can open like towards the basement just now, right? So what do we have here? So um, if this if this is x, this is y, this is z or whatever, right? So in this case you have if this is point A, E X, A Y, E Z, and then M A X Okay, in this case, it allows for rotation about y, right? Because this is y, it can rotate about that y, but it cannot rotate about z, so m, a, z. Now, um, some notes here. You will notice that this one and this one is drawn separately. You cannot tumpang, you cannot occupy, for example, you draw e, x, and then suddenly you put it here m, a, x. No, because the moment should be drawn with the thumb and your fingers. Meaning this, this is the direction in 3D and this is the rotation. Right? Like this. this is your thumb, this is the 
rotation it should be one package you cannot have this one is your force and then your finger go onto that force to occupy that one you cannot it, it create confusion right so it must be clear this this arrow is for the force this one arrow is the thumb for the moment and this one is the rotation of uh, your finger around that, that thumb right similarly here so that's how you draw but if you draw something like this it, 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 it creates confusion right um, especially for a terminal then we do not know whether you are clear what you are doing or etc so do not do this hopefully you understand that one right what else um, if you are fixed right for example this is fixed um, to the wall right so what we have of course for fixed you cannot move anywhere you cannot rotate anywhere so you have ax and y and z M A X M A Y N and Z. So you have full six unknown there, right? Um, of course, if you see the slide, you have like a general bearing. Right? Um, how what is general bearing? Basically, if you have something like a rod, and then you have something like a casing there, something like that. This will go the uh, slide or picture etc. Or in the textbook, right? But if you can imagine, um, like the rod is inside, like a, a casing there, so that um, uh, it can rotate. This one can rotate in this way, right? But you cannot move in this direction. You cannot move upwards, also, right? So that's that's like a bearing. Now, um, if you see the slide or you see the textbook, right? There's a the same exact drawing or image but the name is different one is thrust bearing one is general bearing right so general bearing is basically this is free to move meaning this casing does not restrict any movement in this direction but for thrust bearing it actually you can move out or in it's, it's basically stuck there so that will make a difference in terms of whether you have uh, support reaction force in that axis right but if this is general bearing so, in terms of drawing the figure that I can, at this point, basically, if you consider, um, let's say, originally this is X, Y, and Z. Right? So, what you will have here is, let's say this, let's use a different, this, well, let's use A, let's say this is point B. Right? So, you have BX, um, oh no, sorry. For general bearing, okay, let me write this. This is general bearing. So for general bearing, you will not have BX. You will not have Y. Do you still remember? Because general bearing does not, does not restrict this movement. You can freely move this rod along this line, along that axis. So you will not have that restriction. Right? So, but you will have this one you will have restriction about y so b y and then b z because obviously you cannot move in this direction or that direction because it is trapped in that that, that uh, channel there right what about movement so obviously it is allowed to rotate about x so you cannot rotate about x can you rotate about y obviously you cannot so you will have um, and B, Y and then it cannot rotate here also so M, B, Z right so you have four support reaction in that case that same that's like the slide now if if this is actually a thrust bearing so hopefully you can recall what's the difference Thrust bearing does not allow this movement, so you will have additionally here Ex. This is for thrust bearing only. Right? So, even though the drawing or physically it looks the same, the name means a different mechanism inside, so whether you can uh, move in that direction or not. Right? Um, now, this is if it is cylindrical, right? Meaning the cross section is, is round. So, it is different if the shape is not round 
right? Obviously. So what is the difference? What is the difference? If it's basically uh, something like this, right? Okay. And then the the casing system like there, something like that, right? Meaning that uh, the cross section is square. In this case. General bearing. Yes, if it's general bearing, then you still do not have this one. It is free to move in this axis. Let's say this is point B still. So there's no B X. You will still also have the Y and the Z, obviously, because it, for sure it cannot move in that direction. Now, for um, M B X, M M B Y, and M B Z, it's also obviously still there because you cannot rotate about y, you cannot rotate about z right? but additionally, you cannot also rotate about x why? because of the square cross-section right? because cylindrically, you can rotate right? but if it's a square and the casing is also square hole you cannot rotate right? so you will have mdx So that's how you go about in understanding how to draw um, the support, reaction, forces and moment at any particular point for any particular support. Alright. Um, so what else? Uh, so there are... Okay, they are, if you refer to the slide, they are discussion about properly aligned. So, this is quite, uh, I'm not sure how to explain in this, in this manner because it will require some explanation and to get the feedback whether you understand or not because it can be tricky for someone, right? But basically, if you look at the slide, now, for, if you have general bearing, right, at multiple points, um, and in the slide you will see that they will not draw this moment they will just have these two right? why? why is that? so it is a case where physically this is uh, all separation that can exist within that um, specific uh, you know, type of separation for example, bearing, general bearing obviously if it's like that you cannot move in this axis right? And you can move up. So that's uh, that too, right? If, if, if generally you can move in this one, you don't have action there. And moment wise, you cannot uh, move around this axis, you cannot rotate also, right? Because it's there, you cannot. And about Z axis also, you cannot rotate this way, right? You cannot, right? So you have moment here and there, right? Now, but if you see the, the diagram, if, because the stretch is longer or more complex, right? If um, you have another support, that also have the x, y, and moment, but because of the structures is properly aligned, where basically the tendency for meaning if that point cannot go that way, right? It cannot okay, maybe visually it cannot go up. If you have something here, meaning you have here one and something here also another one, this one is already prevent from this moving up. For example, right? It cannot go up. So indirectly or directly it actually makes that there's no possibility of this having to prevent this rotation because this it, you cannot rotate so it cannot move up this this point so obviously this will never have to restrict the rotation meaning if this is free for example this is free you have here something something put a force there it want to rotate but this one is preventing it right hence you have to draw originally you have to draw but in a specific properly aligned it is designed in such a way that the tendency for rotation is already prevented so effectively this only prevent uh, the movement while rotation it does not come into effect hence it equal to zero hence you don't even draw right so it's quite complicated i think in that concept for some which is why for exam purposes normally we try to avoid 
this kind of question because it required you to understand certain concept um, to draw it properly. Right? But if you look at your question in the textbook, sometimes it says uh, it is properly aligned, etc. So you have to understand, oh, properly aligned meaning that in the structure, it is designed so that this one does not have to carry uh, or prevent the rotation. Hence, you just draw this thing. Right? But for, for the purpose of this lecture, we we'll just assume all and we we'll avoid that kind of discussion, hopefully, because it can test you beyond your first level understanding of, of make, uh, engineering, perhaps. Right? So that's just on that side or slide of properly aligned. Please ask in the next class if you don't understand that one. All right. Now, after you have everything done, right, you have a different type of supports. Also, what else is there? Because in the slide, it doesn't give everything. It just gives. If you understand the concept, you see a different type of. Uh, okay, let's say if you have a um, collar, right? No, a collar is exactly like this. Is it? Yeah, I think so. If you have a collar, you are free to move in here. You cannot move in that direction. You cannot also rotate and rotate about that one. So it's almost the same as that one. What else is there? If you have a hinge or something. So I think if you understand the concept, you are good. Right? Now, um, one note. For any particular free body diagram, of course, here we are zooming at the, the, the point only, really, right? But if you have a structure, and the whole thing have different forces, including this one. So the thing is, when you have to solve equation equilibrium, if it's in 2D, 2D, then you have what? Summation of fx equal to 0, summation of fy equal to 0, and summation of moment equal to 0. Right? And it means what? It means for every figure diagram in 2D problem, you can only have three unknown in total, right? Otherwise, you cannot solve. But for 3D, then you have summation of fx equal to 0, summation of fy equal to 0, summation of fz equal to 0, summation of moment x equal to 0, summation of moment y equal to 0, summation of moment z equal to 0. But you actually have six equations. Meaning you can you can actually have six unknown in one particular question for three D, right? So that is why this is basically a hint. That is why normally if you look at previous exam, you almost never see a fixed support for three D because for fixed, obviously you have for example point A, A X A Y Z, M A X M Y M Z, right? Because it doesn't rotate, it doesn't allow for rotation, it doesn't allow for movement, right? So then you can only have in the problem only one support because that fixed support already have six unknown you cannot have unknown, any other unknown so normally in the exam we we want to try to test you at least two different support for example one support here one support there so normally that's like uh, and this one where you have five so you have another one where you have a cable or roller etc another one just just that's just to give you an idea of what type of question that can be asked. But theoretically, you can be asked also for a fixed support, right? And then you have six unknowns there. So if you calculate, if you have to draw your free body diagram and you count the unknown more than six, and you only have one free body diagram and six equations, then you are missing something. Normally, they are giving some of those value. For example, perhaps so it's no longer unknown or something. Because the maximum number of unknown must be six uh, for you to be able to solve using six equation, right? Okay, so and then you have some discussion. If you see the slide, you have some discussion about statically determining the thing. It the, uh, statically indeterminate, for example, right? Meaning what? Meaning you cannot determine the unknown using statics. That's that's what I mean. Meaning that if you have six equation and then you have you have seven unknown for example, so unknown is more than equation, so statically in the 
hopefully you can understand that one. So it's statically indeterminate. So normally we do not give you questions that you cannot solve because we want to, to we want to actually see the solution to evaluate in the exam. But if you see in the midterm also you have some question like what if, right? Meaning after you calculate and then suddenly you what if we change this into fix or something like that? And then suddenly you the answer if you understand, meaning the answer now unknown is more than equation, hence now is is statically indeterminate. So it can be tested in that kind of question where uh, it's like an understanding question, a follow-up question after some calculation, right? So that's the, 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 the trend for the exam. Normally we will have question like that which test the term of this case, right? Alright, so what else? You also, also the slide for improper constraint. Um, you can see this slide, but for illustration, I think the for example you have like a, let's say we have a beam here, we have a ball and socket here, ball and socket here, right? Ball socket. Can you imagine ball and socket, ball and socket? So if you draw the free that again, how many support rations is there? Okay, I'll give you ten seconds. You should be able to understand if you understand ball and socket. You should be able to tell straight away. Right? Ball and socket it prevent this movement, this movement, and which is one this movement, right? And it's ball and socket. You cannot move anyway, so you have x, y, z. But it allow for all rotation, so there's no moment reaction there. Similarly here, right? X, y, z. If you count, the number of unknown is six, right? Three here and three here. So it seems okay. Six unknown, six equation. Okay, but but you will notice that there's no restriction for rotation. Oops, right? If you see this, like especially if they, this have some bend, right? Meaning that um, it it may be allowed to rotate, right? Because you only restrict the movement, but rotation is allowed, so it will not be static. So that is improper constraint, right? So it's the the number of uh, unknown. It's the same, it's 6, but it will not ensure that it will be static, right? That's an example. Another example there is just like if this is pin, pin support, and there's a roller here, but a roller here, right? Not, not down here, but here, right? Meaning uh, you cannot go inside, but if this is a pin, then there's possibility that it will rotate like this, right? Just, if it's like this, then even though this uh, restrict, um, pin is restricting this movement and this movement, right? And what is to restrict from going down? This one, right? But if it's here, then it will just fall down. So that's improper constraint. Meaning you have constraint, but it's, that's not proper. It will not uh, make sure that it's static. It will move, right? So that's basically improper constraint. Again, if you don't catch that concept, please ask in the next class. Alright. Um, now, going into example. Okay, should we cover example? Alright, we'll cover example. Hopefully you can you can see what's going on here. Now example one in the slide of 5.5 to 5.7. Okay, refer to that picture. I will try to draw as best I can. But it will definitely not be as good as in your slide, but yeah. Hopefully you can imagine that. If you cannot 
please look, take a look at the slide first and look at it. Basically, it's like a cylinder there and then a thrust pad in there at the end, right? And then you have also force here, so you have force here, like 800 Newton going down. So you have A, B, C, D. So you have A, B, C, D. Four different points. And then 6 meter here, 1.5 meter here, 1.5 meter here. Right, that's the structure given, the diagram given. Um, in your slide, and then they say the rod supported by thrust bearing at A and cable. You see, it's a cable subjected to eight, you know, sorry, 80 kilonewton force. So I'll be consistent with the slide. So this is 80 kilonewton. Find the reaction at the thrust bearing A and cable BC. So find the reaction here and here. Right. First step, understand the question. What the question one? So the question one, what is the reaction here from the cable? What is the reaction here uh, at the general bearing? Right. Now, what is the first step? First step is to draw the free body diagram. Right. This is okay. Again, this is an equilibrium problem. Hopefully, you can differentiate between equilibrium problem and not. Right. Uh, for not equilibrium problem, you don't need to draw free body diagram. But equilibrium problem. You have to draw the free body diagram. Right. So what is the body? The body is the rod itself. So basically you will have something like that, right? That's the body. Hopefully the lighting is still okay. Hopefully. Alright. And then you have to draw all the forces uh, including the support reaction force. So this one is already different from the question. So AT that's the easy one. The other easy one is this one, right? What is this? If you have cable, obviously you have tension. That's the tension up. Let's say F, B, C. That's the power. Now, what happened here? Again, what is the idea? Trust bearing. So, many you, you, you check whether it can move in any particular axis and is it can rotate in any particular axis. Right, so x, y, x, so if I draw this one is x, okay, my marker is probably towards the end of its higher. Alright, so can it move in x axis? No, it is restricted, right? Obviously, so you have this is point A, so you have the x. Keep okay, using. Alright. Can it move in, in y axis? Now again, this is the same diagram of bearing but the name is different. So when it is general, it can move. When it is thrust, it is restricted from moving that axis. So in this case, this is thrust. So you have B, uh, sorry, not A. So you have A, Y. Can it move upwards? No. A, Z. Again, upwards or right or left is assumption. But to make it easy, assume to the positive direction so that when you get negative later on then automatically you know it's a negative axis if you draw like that it's okay but then it's confusing not just for you but for the examiner because I'm I want to highlight certain ways so that you will not confuse the examiner in the exam right for your own benefit right so make it step uh, make, make it stay always easy to understand right do you have time x can you rotate about axis? No, you cannot. So you have M D X. Can you rotate about Y? Yes, it's free to rotate. Right? It's free to rotate. About Z? No. So M D Z. Alright, how many unknown here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 unknown. Can you solve? Yes, you can. You have 6 equations. Alright. Is this a complete free body diagram? Body is free, of course. You have the forces. Known is uh, value, unknown is level. Okay, but you need the dimension, right? So we have 1.5 meter, 1.5 meter, 6 meters, right? Then it will be complete, right? Basically, any information that you need to use in the calculation, in the equation, must be there. Otherwise, it's not complete. 
Is this going to be used? Yes, when you calculate moment, you have to know the distance. So if this is missing, your, your mark for your free body diagram will also go missing. Right? You don't want that, you want full mark for your free body diagram. Alright. Now, this is the free body diagram then. So I rub this off. What to do next? You have the option of fx, fy, fz, mx, my, mz equal to zero. Right? So, um, as for 2D also, as we mentioned in the last class, you are free to use whichever one first. It's up to you. But some choice will lead to a longer calculation because of simultaneous equation. So might as well you try to make it shorter by selecting the equation uh, more cleverly perhaps. Right. For example, summation of fx equal to 0. If I use it here, how many unknown will be there in the equation? Summation of fx. You see that this is one unknown. There's no other force in the x, no other force in this. Straight away you know, okay, if I use that, I can answer straight away in that. So summation of f x equal to zero, e x equal to zero, you already get one answer. Right? That's an example of how to see what, what you can do. Another example. If you say if I say m f y equal to zero, right? This one I know. Is there anything else? No. So again, summation of f y to the zero, a y to the zero. That's the answer again. What about summation of f f z? You have one unknown. This is known, no problem. But this is another unknown. So meaning you have two unknown in that equation, right? So if you write that equation, you have two unknown. You have to wait still, and you have simultaneous equation. So might as well wait and use any equation that can give you straight answer first. Right? That's a suggestion to make it easier to follow. Moment. Moment about x axis. Okay, moment about this. How many unknown? I give you 10 seconds. How many unknown do you see? Right? One. Okay, so what? You see this one, right? MAX is about x axis. This one doesn't call it a moment, doesn't call it a moment. This one produces a moment about axis? Yes, because it has a distance there, right? But this is known, no problem. This one is still unknown. So if you use summation of mx equal to zero, you have two unknown. Still you cannot solve straight away. Leave it first. Summation of moment about y axis equal to zero. How many unknown do you have? So this does just produce that moment here, no problem, no, no moment. This one produces moment about y axis, but this is known, no problem. This one unknown, it also produces a moment, but you will notice there's only one unknown. Right? So yeah. So you do summation of moment about y axis equal to zero. Now, please make sure you understand. When you do summation of fx, fyz, my, mx, myz, that's summation of moment about that axis or in that axis or about that axis. It, you do not make sure you do not confuse yourself with this one. This is moment produced by that support reaction. Meaning this is support reaction moment produced by that support. It's not this one. So because some students they confuse, they say, why do we calculate this one when there's no moment here? There's no MAY. That two different story. You understand me? Meaning when you say uh, uh, summation of moment about y axis is zero. The summation of moment about all the forces about y axis because this produces moment about y, this produces moment about y, this not etc. Right? So this is what it means. This one is different thing. You don't have moment in here, no problem. Right? So do not confuse the two. Alright, so now moment about y. So normally we'll just use this as direction. So um, FBC will it be clockwise or counterclockwise about y? It should be counterclockwise, right? Meaning it's positive. So F, B, C, distance of 3, right? It's 3. And then this one is clockwise about y, so minus 80 kN times distance of 1.5 equal to 0. And then you will have F, B, C is basically 40 kN of the view, right? Because 80 divided by 2 is 40. Right, so you have one unknown solved. Alright, 
for players to follow. Um, now, once this is known, if you recall back, just now we skip summation of FZ, right? Because you have one unknown and two unknown. You don't start with that one. But now, this is solved, then you can go back there. Okay, now, summation of. Okay, this is the chronology, right? So we continue with the same. So the summation of FZ equal to zero now. So what do we have? We have EZ minus ET plus FTC, which is 40, plus 40 equal to 0, so EZ equal to 40 kN. Right? So you solve. So you have only 1, 2, 3, 4. So you have another 2 and you have another 2 equation. So MX, okay, now we go back to MX. But we skip that before because you have one unknown and two unknown, right? Right now, this is solved and you go back to MX, so let's say summation of MX to zero. Next moment about this one. So you have M A X. Okay, but everyone this now. Okay, so, so this 80 is clockwise from so minus 80 times the law. What do they say? This is 6. So x is 6. And then you have plus, uh, as we see now, it's 40. Uh, the distance is also 6. And then equal to 0, right? That's the total force that we're talking about. So then you have M A X equal to what you have here? Two four zero is it? Oh sorry, kilo newton, right? This is kilo newton. Is that correct? I think this is minus eighty plus four minus forty and then forty, forty five six. Two four zero kilo newton. Please check the calculation because I'm just doing this on top of my head, I didn't check. Maybe I can check. Yeah, it's 240 km meter. Alright, what is left? We have another one, summation of M Z to the zero. Then what we have? M E Z. Anything else? No rotation of Z, no rotation of Z, or P zero. Also. Alright, so there you go, you actually have solved this question. And find one, two, three, four, five, six, and no. Alright. Unfortunately, you cannot answer it. So, if you have a question, please ask in the next session, or you can ask down there. You can also ask, but yeah, normally in the class, it's easy for me to, 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 to respond. Um, Alright, so we have several other examples. Maybe we take another one, the example number two, right? because we can still draw that one. Uh, it's a, if, you, if the drawing is complex, uh, it's best to do in the class, uh, because we can just show the projection. Alright, so hopefully you understand. Again, pre the diagram, pre the diagram, and then equation equilibrium, equilibrium. It does take some practice to, to, to plan your way so that your answer will be as short as possible, as straightforward as possible, easy to understand for the examiner. Alright? So we'll go to example two. Um, so how is this? This is something like X, Y, Z. So we have like a plate, yeah. Like 
and then it is going to have some vertical cable this ABC so ABC so there's a vertical cable there and then you have force so on the thing you can have a force here 200 kilometer there with a distance of 3 to 2 2 meter 2 meter 3 meter right so basically you can see this problem so there's a plate there
as long as you can calculate R, the positive or negative will be taken care of automatically, right? You, we are using scalar right now. If you use X, um, a moment about X. So what do you have? Moment about this one. This one doesn't produce any moment. What about TE? It produces moment, right? About X, this is not T. So you have it's counterclockwise with PA times the distance of T. And then TB is to no TB no no TC counterclockwise plus plus TC distance of T also. What about this 200? It's uh, clockwise so minus 200 distance of 3 also. This 500 is also clockwise so minus 500 distance of 1.5 equal to 0. Right? And then we have summation of y equal to 0 about this one. So TA doesn't produce any moment about that y is on the axis. TB, you have uh, clockwise, so you have minus TB the distance of 4. And then TC also clockwise, so minus TC distance of 4. And then this one um, counterclockwise, so plus 200 distance of 2. And then this one is also counterclockwise, and so plus 500 of zero. Right. You notice that you will end up with three equations and three unknown, right? And you have three simultaneous equations you need to solve. Right. Hopefully you know how to do that. That's mathematics, that's not statics. So you just need to use your know, mathematical ability to solve static problem. Right. So that's why we do we assume you already have learned this mathematical part in your matrix or form 3, 4, 5, right? Alright, so, uh, so sol solving this using simultaneous equation. Alright, any problem? It should be straightforward, except for those who cannot even visualize whether they call clockwise, counterclockwise, etc. In that case, you might want to use a vector, if you want, right? Um, for the moment, for example, because for vector, moment is r cross f, right? So, for example, for this one, r cross f, r cross f, r cross f, right? And obviously, it will have in terms of vector, you have i, j, k simultaneously. If you do that, just as an illustration, right? If you use um, summation of moment vector, to the zero, so basically, summation of r cross f to the zero. Um, for TA, what is R as here, right? So R is uh, if I strip we use matrix, right? I J K R is 0, 3, 0, right? 0, 3, 0, and then 0, 0, TA. Alright, and then plus it will be quite long. It's not necessary for this case, but I'm just trying to illustrate it. So illustrate. For TB, R is okay, so I J K R is uh, 400, 400, and then 0, 0, TB. Right. And plus I J K. Okay, there's not much space left. So you have, what is it? 4, eh, 4 and 3, right? 4, 3, 0, 0, 0, 3, C. You still have these two, right? Um, so, what should I do? Yeah, I, I think you know this already, so I continue upwards. So, plus I, J, K, uh, Okay, to the 200, so what do you have? 2 and 3, so 2, 3, 0, 0, 0, minus 200. Plus, I, K, uh, 2, 1.5. Right? 
because this is on that axis. What if I say no, no, okay, I want, I want this to be my axis, this one. That's my axis. I cannot label it x I, because that's already taken. Let's say I label it x prime. This is my x prime axis. So I can say some sort of moment about x prime should occur. Uh, should be equal to zero because moment about any axis should be equal to zero if it's in equilibrium. Alright? So if this is the, the axis, it will become easier. Why? Because this and this is on the axis. This is not the only one it's not. So when you draw a uh, uh, calculate moment about this axis, alright. So what do you have? Um, TA is on the axis, no moment. TB, you have uh, clockwise, right? About this axis now, so in minus TB is the distance of 3 meter. Okay, and then TC on the axis, no moment, 200 on the axis, no moment. This 500 is creating moment, it is counterclockwise of plus 500 is the distance of 1 by 5. Then it will go to 0. That's the only 2 moment. Producing any moment about that. So this will be easier, right? Because it's straight away solved your problem. You only have one unknown, so you have PV equal to 250 meter. Is this correct? T in divided by 2 is 250, right? So you straight away solve this one. Okay? If you already solve this one, meaning this one is solved. If you now take moment about y axis, then this is the only unknown so, um, left, right? Or, if I start here, for example, instead of y, I say this is my y prime axis. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Summation of moment about y prime axis. So now, TA is counterclockwise about y prime, so positive TA, the distance of. Uh, Four. All right. TB on the line, no. TC on the axis, no. At the moment, um, two hundred. It's clockwise, so minus two hundred. This is of two. Five hundred also clockwise. Minus five hundred. This of two equal to zero. So TA is basically what is this? This is four hundred. Plus 1000 and then divide by 4. And then you get the answer. Right. And once you get this one and this one, then the rest is easy because you have C, A, and T, B, or B, T, C can solve. Meaning you are solved. Right. So it is much shorter, much easier if you know what to do, um, what the selection of X is, etc. Right. Both, you can try what we have done just now, and this one, the answer should be the same. The answer is the same. But this one is shorter, it doesn't take that much paper in the exam to save some trees. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, that's just. This one becomes automatic, you know what to do if you have done enough exercise. If you haven't, if the exam is the first time that you do the exercise, you want to try, you see in the class, oh, I think I understand, and you come to an exam. Normally, what happens in the midterm will happen again, when most of you. Or many of you, most some of you, get very, very poor results. All right. Um, so again, but if you want to do this, the level has to be clear. The examiner should know exactly what's going on. If you need to say this is x prime y prime, should be clear where is x prime y prime, right? Um, you cannot use x and y here because in the question it already specified this is x, this is y. If you suddenly use this is x y, it will create confusion. It's, it's, it doesn't make sense. Alright, so, yeah, so you have this one, you become what? 1, 4, 3, 7, 3, 5, 0, right? right? Okay, so you can verify, you can see the slide. Alright, um, there's one more example in the slide. But this one, I think uh, it's difficult for me to draw because of the structure there. So we'll skip this one, we'll keep it for the, the next class.
and um, it will be the end of this chapter right um, chapter 5 because this is the last part of chapter 5 before we go to the next chapter right so hopefully you have any question with what we have covered today what we have covered today and additionally we have now the example that we have to cover in the next class inshallah um, hopefully you understand what's going on and do those please do practice because if you see someone do it seems easy really it seems easy. it's actually easy because that's why I like to do it easily but if you see someone do it easily but you never try it will be difficult for you right? it's, it's easy for those people who have tried but for you it will be difficult because it's not your mind is not trained to think how to solve when you see other people solve their mind is already trained that's why the time taken is short but when you see, ah, oh, okay, okay, I understand you actually have never forced or trained your mind to actually solve and you will see when you try on your own how much time it takes for you to decide for what needs to be done right? so make sure you try um, we are here in university so I'm not going to force you etc we are adults I just you know, give you suggestion, we'll give you best practice hopefully you will take it if you take the advice, it's best for you. If not, it's your own life, your choice, your result. Right? So we are here just to facilitate your learning process, inshallah. So any question, please take note and ask me straight away in the next class, hopefully, inshallah. And also, we will have a quiz in the next class. Um, yeah, so just be prepared. I think we will start with 2D, 2D, rigid body equilibrium problem. Uh, before next week maybe quiz for 3D right. be prepared hopefully you give up your mark for your quiz or your carry mark inshallah with that I think I will not prolong this any longer thank you for watching um, hopefully you understand and we step in the session subhanahu wa ta'ala assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh